Hey there friends, so you learned top stalls yesterday. Now it's time to put together everything that we know about stalls into what I like to consider to be the ultimate stall drill. That's right, we're gonna practice each of them in sequence and it's gonna help us get all of them down cleaner. Drex here from drexfactor.com, bringing you poise spinning and flow arts to benefit your body and brain during the COVID-19 outbreak. And today, I am giving you my very favorite drill for poi in general and more specifically with stalls. Before we dive in, I just wanna give a quick shout out to the friends of the channel. Big thanks to Dark Monk, Flow Toys, Pyroterra Light Toys, LMF Props, Spin Balls, and Ultra Poi for helping to make the videos on this channel possible. You can learn more about all of these amazing companies and the work that they're doing to support flow artists like yourself by checking out the links that I've got down in the description of this video. Ooh doggy, so those top stalls yesterday, right? Yeah, so um, we're gonna use those today. We're gonna use them a lot because I want you to get down all of your stalls and feel super comfortable with them. So for years and years and years as I was spinning poi and working on my stalls and everything, I had kind of a problem. I, my mind is very methodical, it's very mathematical, and I really wanted a way to practice my stalls in such a way that it was going to break them out into something that was gonna be very intuitive and repeatable and easy to kind of apply in ways that were going to help me become comfortable with all of my stalls over time. And it took a while for that to happen, but then I finally cracked the code on it a couple years ago, and I would love to share this exercise with you. So like, I know we could just as easily say, okay, I'm gonna do 10 down stalls and 10 up stalls, so on and so forth and everything, and there's some utility to that, but I also love doing this in such a way where it helps you see the uniting characteristics behind all of the stalls and mixes them up in such a way that you get a new challenge every time you do one. So before we do anything with the poi, I have a little sequence of words that I want you to memorize. That sequence is bottom, bottom, down, up, top, top, up, down. Again, it's bottom, bottom, down, up, top, top, up, down. This is the sequence of stalls that you are going to be doing in the course of this exercise. It's gonna be true no matter which direction the poi is turning. So, get this one lodged in your memory, yeah? Okay, so quick review on how I conceptualize stalls because it's going to help in decoding that sequence that I just gave you and it also is just good to know in general. Um, I think of the poi as spinning around a circle, which shouldn't be news to anybody, but the thing that makes stalls work is to imagine that around that circle there is a box, namely a box that touches the circle in four points corresponding to the top, sides, and bottom of that circle, right? Now whenever the poi head passes by one of those intersections between the circle and the box, something unique can happen. That is, I can get the poi head to leave the path of the circle and instead follow the path of the square. Now, as my hand travels straight to the point where uh, the circle and the square intersect, the poi head changes its path to going in a straight line. And when my hand and the poi reach this point right here where they're both along the edge of a square, the movement of them cancels each other out. Now, um, this can only happen if I move my hand out as my poi is going through one of these intersections. That is, if I try and do it over here, it's not gonna work for me. It has to happen right at the intersection between the two shapes. Um, so it can sometimes be a little bit confusing to think about moving your hand right at that moment, but I guarantee you, the more you can visualize this properly, the more helpful it's going to be in actually cleaning up your stalls. So that means that with four corners, each touching two sides, we have a total of eight stalls that we can do as we go around this pattern here. They are as follows. Namely, uh, this corner down here, I can hit with a bottom stall. This corner down here, I can also hit with a bottom stall. I can also hit this corner down here with a down stall. I can hit this corner up here with an up stall. I can also hit that corner with a top stall. I can hit this corner with both a top stall as well as an up stall, and I can hit that corner down below with another down stall. Hey, guess what? Remember that sequence that we memorized up front? Bottom, bottom, down, up, top, top, up, and down. Well, guess what? That's the sequence of stalls that we just did. 
So what I'm doing here is I'm making sure that I'm hitting each corner twice in sequence. That is, I'm hitting each of the segments in order as I go around this square, right? Uh, it just so happens that I'm doing it in clockwise order or clockwise relative to me. It's going to look counterclockwise to all of you following out there. Um, and interestingly enough, this happens if I start with the poise spinning counterclockwise relative to me. That is, if I start spinning counterclockwise, I'm going to go through the stalls in clockwise order. So we go bottom, bottom, down, up, top, top, up, down. And if I want to go through all of these points in counterclockwise order, then I start with the point clockwise, thinking bottom, bottom, down, up, top, top, up, down. Yeah? Do you see how that works? And also I should note that it doesn't really matter how many beats you take in between each stall. It could be three beats, it could be four beats. Uh, personally, I prefer doing it in as few beats as possible just because I find that that means that I'm better able to adjust and switch to different stalls on the fly and everything. Um, but you can just as easily wait for a couple beats in between each one and that's totally fine too. Cool, so let me show you that at work in slow motion. Okay, so if you can do it with one poi, your next mission is to be able to do it with two poi. I'm gonna try and make this easy on you to start off with and just having the poi spin in together same, yeah? So again, with both of the poi, you're gonna be thinking bottom, bottom, down, up, top, top, up, down. Again, bottom, bottom, down, up, top, top, up, down, yeah? It's the exact same exercise, I'm just doing it with both poi at the same time, and those of you who are eagle-eyed and remember my discussion about anti-spin flowers and the different timing and directions and everything, will note that this is another one of those examples where we can use spinning in together same to essentially double a figure, make it look like there are two copies of it standing right next to each other, right? Um, this is probably the easiest way to do this exercise with both hands, if for no other reason than they're both executing the exact same thing at the exact same time and you don't really have to worry about um, kind of keeping them separate or having them do different stalls at the same time, which you do in literally every other timing and direction combination. So this is a good place to start. And seriously, drill the hell out of this. It is going to make each and every one of these stalls feel so much more comfortable over time. And just to put it out there, if you are in a place where the top stalls are really just not happening for you, there is an alternative version of this drill that you can do that doesn't include the top stalls. And that just involves going bottom, bottom, down, up, up, down. Yeah, we're just completely skipping the line along the top. And in that way, you don't have to deal with it and you still get to drill all the other stalls. So of course, because we can do this in together same, it means that we can also do it in together opposite, split time opposite, and split time same direction. Um, 
I think that I'm throwing enough at you today. So if you are that eager person that wants to dive into all of them, uh, I have additional video available as extras on my Patreon that goes through each and every one of these. Uh, so you can go check that out by signing up for my Patreon. It's available at any reward level and everything. So um, yeah, if you are that ambitious person, have at it. Cool. So um, I know that this drill can be a lot, but seriously, if you do this every day, if you do 10 of them every day, that is you get around clockwise 10 times, you get around counterclockwise 10 times, in no time at all, you're going to see your stalls become so much more precise, so much more clean, and quite frankly, so much more confident. So. I had a person ask me the other day if there were any poi drills I could recommend for beginners. And honestly, this is it. This I think is probably the single most important poi drill I have ever come up with in my time as a poi spinner. So if you're looking for something that's gonna make a huge difference, this is the one. Awesome, thank you so much for watching. I would love to see you all out there working on this. Please post video to Instagram or Facebook and tag me. I am DrexFactor on Instagram and DrexFactorPoi on Facebook. Uh, I will offer feedback when I can, but uh, otherwise I will be happy to check out your work. And if you want me to repost your video to my stories, post it to your stories and make sure to tag me, yeah? And if you are feeling ambitious and want to get a leg up, uh, I highly recommend checking out my Beyond the Basics course on my learning site at learn.drexfactor.com. Uh, it's available for a limited time for 50% off using the promo code COVID-19. Because I know a lot of y'all out there are working on learning POI during the quarantine and I want to be able to help you doing it and everything. These tutorials are a part of that. Please make sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. All of these things help more people find my videos and doing so means that we wind up with more POI spinners in the long run. And I am down for that and I hope that you are too. So if you are enjoying this project, that is me uploading a video every weekday during the COVID-19 quarantine, uh, please consider signing up to support the work that I do over on Patreon, like all of these nice folks did. Um, Patreon has been kind of a godsend for me during this whole crisis. I was really expecting for the past three months to be a very dark time for me financially. And thanks to the people that have been signing up to support my work on Patreon, it has instead been a time of creative abundance and uh, me getting to try out a lot of really fun new things. And I really appreciate that. So if you have the means to support this project, and I totally understand if you don't, but if you do, uh, please consider signing up over at patreon.com slash drexfactorpoi. You get early access to all of my content as well as a say in what topics I pursue in the future. Uh, plus which I post some behind the scenes stuff and extra stuff every once in a while. So uh, you should check that out. Awesome. So those of you who are eagle-eyed may be realizing that all of the stall drills that we played with today were with the poi going around in in-spin. For every in-spin, there is an anti-spin. So we're gonna learn this same drill in anti-spin tomorrow. Again, because it's important. And also because it actually took me a couple years to figure out how to transpose this exercise into anti-spin. And when I did, the clouds parted and the angels sung for me. That only happened last year. So I can't wait to share that one with you all.